looks to be in 28th place right now with 81 open series points. So this is actually a pretty important weekend for him. You take a look at the players ahead of him. Let's say Lowry were to spike this tournament and get 20 open series points, that would push him up to 101. All of a sudden, he's in 19th place. Right in the mix. Thomas Kreider there with a Columbus Blue Jacket sweater on, probably a local, as that is the local professional hockey team. Awesome. We had a great time there the last time we were in Columbus. Yeah. They were on the road yesterday, so we couldn't couldn't catch them. We run so bad. A Frontier bivouac here from Lowry. Let's make it two. Both players just going to play some lands to get the party started here. Let's see who's going to have the actual first play, though. It looks like it's going to be Kreider. Kreider will play a copy of Herald of Torment, so he's going to the skies. Slow opening here for Thomas, unfortunately, for him. A bunch of one-drops in this list. Bloodstone Champion and Herald Torment, Spiteful Return. He's missed them all. Rakshasa Death Dealer, which unclear if he didn't draw or simply can't cast. Well, now we're just going to play a third line pass the turn back. Trigger there from the Herald is going to bring Kreider down to 19, of course. I'll see what he's able to put together. There is Nurbor. This is a bunch of mana. And we have ourselves a Whip of Erebos, a very popular card in mid-range decks, making an appearance here. And Thomas's list more mid-rangey than Black Aggro. He's going all the way up to Siege Rhino. There's also only one copy in the list, so this wow. is a fun of. Lowry going to play a Boon Sader and a turn. He does have three copies of those in his deck. There's Yop and my Coast. Let's see what the fob's going to be, assuming that there is one. You can't see a copy of Savage Knuckleblade in his hand. Looks like he also has another copy of Boon Sader. Looks like he may be going towards Knuckleblade, and he is. Going to take one, give it haste, beat downs, get you for eight. Such an honest curve here from Anthony. I don't think Savage Knuckleblade is an honest card. It is super honest. Are you kidding me? It's, it is... It is really honest. We have different definitions of honest, then, I suppose. I'm not sure whose is correct. What is honest about the Knuckleblade? It's a three-color creature that just attacks and blocks. It has three abilities. They're all, they're all to help it attack and block. That's, <laughs> that's true, actually. Here is an attack from Herald of Torment. Lowry going to take three more in the air. Kryder's going to gain a little bit of life. No one feels cheated after they lose to a game uh, to the Knuckleblade in Constructed. Draft may be a little different, but in Constructed, knock yourself out. Bloodstone Champion does come down. Lowry Shroff for the turn was a copy of Stubborn Nile. That's a delight. That one has turned on in multiple ways. Lowry with the Storm, but dragging a hand as well. You see the Boon Seder as well. Maybe considering bestow action. A lot of fives in Anthony's hand. I'm sure he would ideally like to find a four here to line up alongside the Stubborn Denial. Here's a copy of Hero's Downfall. And that will be denied. Sorry about that, Whammy. Stubborn Denial would have countered it no matter what. Yep. No way to stop it. Again, a three of in Lowry's deck this weekend. So it's oh. like all this damage is going to come across. Of course, the Bloodstone Champion ain't going to do any blocking. A little surprised there to see Anthony play that the way that he did. He could have tapped the Yavamaya Coast to Stubborn Denial, which would have allowed him to cast Ash Cloud Phoenix post combat. Sure. By tapping the Bibwack here, he's forced to play Boon Seder, which I think is better served in his hand as a trick instead of being deployed as a creature. The, fr the fact that the Ashkel Phoenix also blocks the Herald of Torment may complicate Thomas's turn quite a bit. Here is an attack. Five points damage is going to come across. Lowry is going to take some, and Kreider will gain some. As life totals do flip in reverse. There is Boon Seder yet again. Looks like Kreider may have an effect here. There goes the Savage Knuckle Blade. So Lowry will untap with his 242s, draws a copy of Frontier Bivouac. There's a Stormbreath Dragon. I believe, Patrick, that is Xaxes. That was, and Anthony got uh, pretty fortunate there to avoid a fifth land from Thomas because we were about to go back into the last year train with a Grey Merchant, I think, finishing things off. Oof, that would have been oh, nasty. Yeah. Throwback. By the way, Anthony Lowry <laughs> going to win game number one here with Team of Monsters over Thomas Kreider. Playing Ives on Aggro, we will take a look at Kreider's sideboard, which you have in front of you. A Murderous Cut, another Whip of Erebos, a Bioblight, two Erase, Two Suspension Field, two Utter End, two Airbos, God of the Dead, four Thoughtseize. Just more creature removal against this deck. The Suspension Field's great here. The Murderous Cut is good, and the Utter Ends as well. Not all the most efficient answers, but just more removal. I've got some twos and some threes. Two Disdainful Stroke, two Hornet's Nest, three Anger of the Gods, three Lightning Strikes, a Hornet Queen, a Clever Impersonator, a Sir Dragon Claw, a Destructor of Revelry, and a copy of Hunt the Hunter. That one will not be coming in. I can promise you that. Uh, Disdainful Stroke, you actually didn't really see any targets for that outside the Whip of Erebos, so I can't imagine that's going to be coming in. Uh, we saw Thomas go to the skies, so uh, Hornet's Nest doesn't seem all that appealing. I guess Lightning Strike is just an easy place to start. Well, Lightning Strike and Anger of the Gods are going to be good no matter what. The Hornet's Nest depends exactly what you think Thomas is up to. You did see Bloodstone Champion, which implies 
uh, some stream of early creatures, yep. even though Thomas didn't happen to draw them. So Hornet's Nest may or may not come in. And I think the Destructive Revelry will come in as well because these black aggro decks have so many bestow creatures. It can kill Herald of Torment, and Bloodstone Champion usually implies there's other things like that going on. So I think the Revelry can come in as well. You also saw Whip of Erebos too. This is true. This is true. We will take a look at our good friend Mr. Ooze here, now available at StarCityGames.com. Yes, so we come out with these StarCityGames.com Creature Collection tokens. This is the latest edition here. Two copies are given, to a, given away every time you o enter a Legacy Open. Also, we have play mats, deck, bo deck boxes, dice bags, sleeves. You can get these over at the website or come to our dealer booth at any Open or Grand Prix StarCity Games is at. I like the use. Use is fun. I'm a big fan of the use. We'll see what we have next year. That's in the works. Dissolving some skeletons over there. Well, that's fine. High-fiving each other. What are they supposed to do? Not dissolve skeletons? Um, yeah, I guess. I guess you're right. That is kind of their. That. that is kind of what they do. Yeah. That's how they eat. Exactly. You have to eat. It's not their fault. Now available. StarCityGames.com. This game number two will be underway here in just a moment. Teamer is picking up in popularity. A couple Grand Prix top eights. Kibler just missed out in Los Angeles and. Yeah, it's starting to get the ball rolling a little bit with this archetype. I, mean, I know Brian's happy about it, and Lowry has experienced quite a bit of success as well with these large creatures. I think the only really, really rough matchup for this deck, game one at least, is against the boss slide derivatives. This deck just can't protect itself early enough. So much of its resources are allocated to attacking. It's not really that good at blocking. Mm -hmm. But if you can clean up that matchup post-board, I think this deck can be very, very good. The numbers here for Lowry, four copies of Elvish Mystic and four copies of Rattleclaw and six, so eight mana accelerants, three copies of Air of the Wilds, three Boon Satyrs playing a huge role in the last game, four Savage Knuckle Blades, two copies of Pelucranus World Eater, three Ash Cloud Phoenix, and four Stormbreath Dragons, so able to get in the skies, and then the one of Strike Dragon Claw that I imagine most opponents won't see coming. I would be surprised by it too. Also, one more on the board too. Yeah, got that hideout on the board, and of course the spells, as we did mention at the top of game number one, three copies of Crater's Claws three Teamer Charms and three copies of Stubborn Now, so they throw in some lands, you're good to go. A lot of decks will be going to Disdainful Stroke against you post board. You have so many fours and fives that Sorak has a nice threat to have access to. I wouldn't want too many of them, but one or two, I think, can do good work against a lot of the blue decks post board. If you are just joining us, it is Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan, along with Nick Miller in the sideboard. At SCG Live, hashtag SCG COL for your tweets, as we are in Columbus, Ohio, round number three of 11. Yes, 11, 757 players doing battle here. Fantastic turnout. We do thank all the players in attendance. Expect to see a similarly large turnout tomorrow for our Legacy Open and our modern Premier IQ as well. You think we're looking at a, a 10-rounder tomorrow for Legacy? I would not be surprised. Not at all. We got a long, long weekend of work in front of us. I believe it, but I don't mind it. I can talk about Magic forever, and we will today. <laughs> That's for sure. 11 rounds of action. We'll figure out who's going to be elimination rounds tomorrow morning, starting, of course, at 8 a.m. East Coast time. Maybe it is Anthony Lowry who is quietly sneaking up the Open Series leaderboard, sitting in 28th place right now for season number four. 81 Open Series points off the back of a lot of work of IQs. He's found a deck that he likes. He's winning with it. He's off to a nice start this weekend. Still waiting for a breakthrough performance on the Open Series. Yeah. He is, too. Yeah. yeah. He knows it. Let's see, both players are going to keep their opening hands. The Caves of Coelus is how Cryer will start. Lowry with a Biffwhack, and he will just pass the turn over to Cryer, who will draw. His second turn starts with the Manic Influence. The follow-up is Cryer will take a little bit of damage here from his lands. The Spiteful returned. And this is sort of the giveaway that Thomas is playing a very aggressive list and simply had a bad draw in that respect the last game. It does make you wonder if Lowry maybe shifted his deck around when he saw the Blood Soak Champion, know that he is playing against a more aggressive strategy. Lowry going to play a Rattleclaw Mystic and just pass the turn back over to Kreider, who will untap and draw very quickly. Spiderfield returned, ready to start attacking, you have to imagine. It's what it does. Not much of a blocker for numerous reasons. This is true. Will Lowry make a trade here is the question. He does have a Rattleclaw Mystic that allows him to ramp. Oh, right is a 2-1 creature. It looks like he will trade. He's down 18 from the Spiteful Returns trigger. There's another copy of Manic Influence, so Kreider's going to take two more points of damage. And it's a Master of the Feast. 
This threat's pretty good against Teamer. Yes. They don't have it spot is. removal. Yep. I mean, their answers are things like Teamer Charm and Crater's Claws, which is not that efficient. This is a card that got a lot of hype initially, although it looks like Anthony has drawn his one sideboard in Destructive Revelry, which is a bit of a bummer. That is <laughs> timely. <laughs> Very timely. But in the abstract, this, this threat seems pretty well suited to fighting Teamer. Even beats all the flyers. So here's Whoop of Erebos. That's going to, oh my god, this is a good turn. That's going to be stubborn, stubbornly denied. And now there will be some revelry. That is a very good turn by Anthony Lowry. Rough turn for Thomas. Yeah. Rough turn. Yeah. His one of whip is in the bin, and his creature is dead, and Anthony got to draw a card. And two of his lands are mana confluence against a deck that can start attacking. There's a land, but no follow-up there from Lowry. Rider. He's got a Herald of Torment. That will resolve. Lowry will draw a card. He looks like he's drawing quite a few lands at this point. Going to play Yav Maikos. Just pass the turn back. I think he's got all lands and just one spell at this point. Maybe a Crater's Claws or a Lightning Strike. Here's well, an attack. Given all the work that Thomas has done on himself here, just a couple burn spells might be able to finish off this game, even if Anthony never deploys a single creature. And Lowry's actually looking at Lightning Strike right now and has no interest in actually sending that. So there's a world that exists where Kreider might get locked out of casting spells here because those two copies of Manic Influence. We can't forget one of those lands as well is a Caves of Koilos. And a Herald of Torment ticking away on yeah. him too. Lightning Strike is going upstairs, puts you down to six. Untap and draw, Storm Breath Dragon. There's also a Crater's Claws there. Yep, there's Crater's Claws. That's going to be for five. That'll put you down to one. This is what it's called the hardest of locks. Yep. Untap, upkeep, so trigger. So that's going to do it. Anthony Lowry going to win this match over Thomas Kreider. Two games, zero. Teamer Monsters going to move on to 3-0. and Kreider will pick up his first loss with his Obson Aggro deck. And for Lowry, a player who still does not have an open series top eight, something that's been eluding him for some time. He knows it. He's been looking to get it. This would be one way to earn it here in the 11-round open in Columbus. For sure. And the lesson there, those lands, they aren't free. No, they are not. You want to put Siege Rhino into your, you know, Blood Soak Champion deck? Going to pay some costs.